Hey, good news. We have another episode of the Azure Enabling Show in which we're discussing what do you do when you're finding that your cloud spend is going up and up and you don't know whether you're getting the value for your money. So join us on another Cloud Clinic here on the Azure Enablement Show. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Azure Enablement Show, here where we're doing a cloud clinic. We have our expert, Magnus, on the line. Hey, Magnus, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. I'm ready to go with another question. Excellent. Well, we have another question, and this is not an easy one. This is from Jeffrey from South Carolina, and Jeff wants to, or Jeffrey wants to know, um, we're sort of gaining more, you know, going to the cloud was supposed to be like uh, uh, cost savings. But the problem that 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 he's having is, is that cloud bill keeps on going up all the time, and that's not making the financial people at his organization happy. And so the question is, how do you tell whether cloud was a good investment at all, and what do you do about the fact that the bill, you know, is keeps on going this direction? Yep, yep. Uh, I get this a lot because it, when you're starting to use cloud, you need to experiment a bunch, and you need to figure things out. And you start using uh, resources, and and hopefully you're using them to to uh, get more uh, business and grow your business and get more income. But there there's always a risk that 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 it gets a little bit that your uh, expenses run away from you, and mm -hmm. so you don't know exactly what's going on. And and um, actually, I'll tell you that as an example, a while ago I was talking to a, a client of mine, and I was doing inventory in their stuff, and I found. Uh, so a, a little scale set of VMs running. And I tried to ask them, what, what are these VMs? And they're like, huh, we still have those? Oh. Um, and then I found another set. That they actually had 10 VMs running for months, uh, just accumulating costs for no reason. And they just didn't realize that they had them or nobody felt really accountable for that cost. And so accountability is, an, is a very powerful thing uh, that we need to think about. Uh, to, to sort of ingrain in our, our organization that they are accountable for the cost that, that accumulates in Azure. And that's probably what this, this caller is, is uh, talking about. Well, I, I get that costs don't always feel real in the cloud. So how do you sort of connect the cost of a resource with like a person or a group or something so things don't get away in the same way? Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good question. So obviously you you'll do that classic thing that you, you put tags with your cost center on uh -huh. all your resources. That's a kind of a simple thing. Everybody does that. But so what if you just put the tags there? What do you do with that? That later well, you have to do something with those tags. And right. so in Azure, there's this whole space of cost management, which I feel and and I see a lot is under appreciated or, or underused. The, the, the service is there, but a lot of companies are not using it. They're racking up a, a huge Azure consumption maybe, and they have hopefully some great business on, on Azure. Fantastic. But they're not using cost management. And there is something in there called budgets specifically mm -hmm. for this scenario. And they're not using it. And when you ask them why they're not using it, they don't really have a good answer. They're just not using it. So I guess um, the answer to the caller to the caller's question specifically is they should invest in cost management uh, and and specifically uh, take a look at the budgeting inside of there. Okay, and uh, why why do you, and you think people just don't know it's there or they don't use it? Is there is a you know what do you get out of using budgets? So let's assume you do yeah. start using it. Right. Um, so. Again, going back to like the overall organizational issue of, of accountability. Yeah. Um, as a professional, right? I want to do a good job and I want to know what I'm kind of measured against. What's a, what's a success criteria? Like how much money can we spend and when do people get cranky because the cost is high or, or when do our consumers or our, our end users get cranky because the performance is not enough. So we kind of have to have more performance, which is probably more spend uh, in Azure, right? So there's this balance in between and I need to be accountable there. So if I have a budget, if you go into like my subscription, I have my application in a subscription and you assign yeah. a certain budget to it. It doesn't have to be right the first time, just make a, a reasonable guess. And if you go way over it, you try to figure out why and maybe you have to adjust your budget. But after a while, you'll figure out what the budget should be for this. And, uh, and if you're within, within those bounds, cool, everything should be okay and your, your costs are kind of reined in. 
But if you go outside of that, then you have to start thinking, is it because more demand and that's a good thing or, or right. just more waste and that's a bad thing. Uh, so, so you kind of have to um, add accountability by using budgets. So there's a technical solution, use budgets, and it leads to people feeling accountable for what they're doing. Meaning, should we be looking at these uh, advisories for right-sizing VMs, for example, or should we um, invest time in auto-scaling because the demand is different over, over the, the, the hours of the day? So maybe in the night we can have fewer instances of something, in the day we can have more. And that's, you know, all those activities, things you should be doing to control the cost, they are motivate you get motivated if you need to follow a trend line on your budget right that so, makes sense and I, and I can imagine you want to have sort of a policy of what you're going to do when you when you burst out of your budget and 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 oh, yeah. what what should the organization do okay yeah. so let's just leave off here with an easy question for jeffrey which is um how should he get started right that's that's a good point so you you go into this area in cost management you go under there to budgets and then you start learning about that. Set, set up, uh, again, find out how you enable it and set a number for the budget. And if you, again, if you blow the first budget because you don't exactly know how much it's going to cost, that's okay. I think over time you'll zoom in on where you should be, right? Yeah. Um, and, and figure out if it's reasonable. So start there and then may institute a policy that the budget should always be activated because there are Azure policies to, to control that. If there isn't a budget, you'll get alerted. This thing doesn't have a budget and you should probably have one. And after that, you look into adding that to your, your infrastructure automation. So when you deploy infrastructure, it there's a process in your organization that it should also include deployment of the budget frames because it comes with the infrastructure. When you deploy the infrastructure, it incurs cost. At the same time, you say, this is the budget for this cost. Okay, sense? super helpful. Um, Jeffrey, I hope that answered your question. Really appreciate you sending it in. I want to thank all of you for watching. I want to thank you, Magnus, for answering and uh, hope to join you again on another episode of the Azure Enablement Show. Mm -hmm.